again, welcome out to church. And we started a brand new series last weekend, so we're gonna jump right in this weekend to that message again, just the second part of it. But we entitled this series, A Manual for Living. We got it out of Proverbs, and we'll show you that verse, verses in a moment. But our little tagline is wisdom from the book of Proverbs. Let me ask before we start, how many here could use some wisdom to navigate in life that you're living right now? Hey guys, just a little side thought. We're living in the worst time that the planet's ever seen with stuff that is going on in culture. It's not been like this ever before. It might have been quietly behind closed doors, but now it's out front in the open. And your kids, adults, need to have some help navigating. So what they need is for us to teach them wisdom. And we found this out last week. Proverbs was written mainly to kids. Why? The kids would be trained in Proverbs so that they could live life accordingly the way that God would want them. Here's the problem. Many of us are kids, spiritually speaking. You just accepted Christ. So you don't know Proverbs any better than a 17-year-old knows it that just accepted Christ. So we're gonna all learn it together. And so we're going through this week by week. And last weekend, if you were here, we talked about what are Proverbs. And if you were here, as I went through and we got towards the end, we talked about the fear of the Lord. And if you were here with us on first Wednesday, you know that you heard about the awe of God. That's one of the actual definitions for the fear of the Lord. But it says this in Proverbs, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So when you go after wisdom, you start fearing the Lord, you're gonna be filled and be able to tap into the wisdom you need in life. Guys, there's some of you about to make decisions. And I'm not talking just, I got notes about this. I'm talking from my heart right now. You're about to make decisions that God wants you to pull back and not make the decision until you prayed about it and tapped into his wisdom. And so last weekend, the question I was asked more than anything is, please tell me that you're gonna tell us how to get wisdom. So that's what we're doing this weekend. It was already planned what we were gonna do, but I wanna show you one other verse. You can listen to it, it won't be on a screen. Proverbs 22, four says this, humility is the fear of the Lord. Humility is the fear of the Lord. So when you're a person who feels like, I know it all, I know better than you, I don't take advice from anyone, no one can tell me anything, let me just say that again, humility. That means you lower yourself. All of us need to humble ourselves to God before anything else. Amen, so we'll, we, we'll talk probably somewhere in this series more about that, but I just wanna remind you, we talked about it last week. Proverbs chapter one is our text. Verses one through six, it says this, and we're reading out of the message. These are the wise sayings of Solomon, David's son. So we know David, David had a son named Solomon. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. He's one of the kings of Israel. It says, Israel's king, written down, so we'll know how to live well and right. How many would like to know how to live well and right? Do you know how many people come to our church, they just accepted Christ, they have no idea. They don't know how to live. I mean, I've had people literally come up to me, and while they're talking to me, I'm like, you just smoked a joint before you walked into church, didn't you? And I don't tell them that. I don't ever say that to them, because here's what I know, they just accepted Christ. He'll clean up all the mess as life goes on. So they're not gonna be perfect. Everyone in the building is not perfect. Are y'all all with me? Anyway, to understand what, it, what you're like, well, how do you know what it smells like? <laughs> You'd have to know my high school years. But anyway, what life means and where it's going. A manual for living. So that's where we got our title for the series. A manual for living, for learning what is right and just and fair. To teach the inexperienced, now remember whether old or young, you can be inexperienced, the ropes and give our young people a grasp on reality. Young people that are here in church this weekend, whether you're sitting right here or whether you're in the building somewhere, can I just say it to you? Culture has nothing to know about what God says in his word that he would like for our lives. The culture you live in right now is against God, not for God. So the culture is preaching something against the Bible constantly. Here's the choice we all have to make. Are you a parent? And are you a young person that says, you know what? I'm gonna just listen to what God says. I wanna, I wanna find out what the word of God says and I wanna follow what the word of God says. I think it's the best thing you can do. There's something here in Proverbs, also for seasoned men and women, still a thing or two for the experienced to learn. Fresh wisdom to probe and penetrate the rhymes and reasons of wise men and women. So 
A Manual for Living is a series this weekend we're gonna talk about Wisdom's Call. If you're taking notes, our notes are available. Wisdom's Call is the title of this weekend's message. And again, if you grab my notes, you can actually follow right along and have the notes and all the scriptures. So, I wanna talk to you about one thing as we ended last week, and I, I thought about it afterwards, I thought I need to say this this weekend. Life's experience, you're 50 years old, you're 60 years old, and you have life's experience. That does not mean you have wisdom. So the difference is this. My dad had a lot of life's experience. The first home that we were going to be buying, I went directly to my dad, because my dad, for all of you that don't know, not only was a tool and die person that did that for years, that's how he supported our family. He also had a side job. Most Italians in Warren, Ohio have this side job. He was a bricklayer and a block layer. So he understood, he built his first home himself. He had other people that would come over and help him out and do some stuff like the electrical work and all of that. But eventually he learned all that himself, did all that stuff himself. So who are you gonna go to? I didn't go to him for necessarily wisdom from God at this point. I was a young guy, he was young at the time, and I said, Dad, I'm buying my first house, I need to know some stuff. What should I look for in windows? What should I look for in the basement? How high should those blocks go up? He was a block layer, I knew he knew. So I went to him for that. Take a Christian, a Christ follower, who my dad eventually became, and take life's wisdom and experience that you've earned on your own experiences and put it with God's wisdom together, and you are a person that people wanna talk to. They wanna gain some wisdom from you. But let's not confuse earthly experience. That's why last week I said, you could be a 70-year-old man or woman and you don't have wisdom that comes from God. Wisdom that comes from God has to be obtained. And we talked about that last week. So this weekend, what I wanna teach you is, how could you tap into the wisdom of God? Now, I asked you earlier, and it looked like everybody would like to have some wisdom. But let me look one more time. How many of you, if you could obtain the wisdom of God in your life right now, would like to get some wisdom? Anyone? All right, so everyone. So what if this great question to ask to start off, what if wisdom requires a difficult choice in your life? What if wisdom requires a difficult choice? Are you willing to make that choice? Because we are Christ followers if you're here and you've accepted Christ. If you haven't, in a moment you'll have an opportunity. But wisdom is actually living in a skillful and a godly way on this planet. Um, when I watch any news program or I watch what's going on in the world we live in right now, none of it is godly. Some of you are sucked right into it and don't even know it, and you think it's the normal. It is not the norm. The Bible's the norm. God's word is the norm for our lives. What's going on in this world is bizarre. The culture has gone completely haywire. Here's why it did. Back when all of you that are older here thought it was really cool in the 60s and the 70s to be partying and going to Woodstock and all the stuff that you did. There was a group of people moving into our high schools and our colleges that said, we're gonna remove God. And it got passed and it got removed. And you can think all you want that didn't affect anything. Oh, it did affect it. So I didn't go to those kind of schools where they pulled out God, I went to a Catholic school and so the thing that we had every day is we did the Pledge of Allegiance every day and we prayed every day right at the beginning of school. Even though we didn't know Jesus personal in a personal way, here's what we did know, we knew God. We knew that they obviously were there uh, saying things to God and having prayers to God. And then when I went to a high school, I got, unfortunately, I got kicked out of Catholic schools. <clears throat> but too many detentions in one year, um, my ninth grade year. So I moved to Hallen High School, which John F. Kennedy High School in Warren, Ohio is where I went. I moved to this other high school, and I, I, I realized even in that school, they, they got up every single day at the beginning of the day, every classroom, and did the Pledge of Allegiance. Every day. Why? Because they were trying to focus on the fact that we're under God. When you're under yourself, that's where all the trouble happens. So eventually, all of that got moved out. So what is the first step? to obtaining wisdom. That's what we're talking about. This weekend, if you wanna know how to get wisdom, take some notes, listen to what we're saying. The first step, you can jot this down, the first step is obtaining and applying, to obtaining and applying wisdom to our lives is to listen to his word. And through it, 
We know this, in his word, that's where God speaks to you. You have to look at God's word as though it was speaking to you. So here's, here's how I grew up in this Christian walk. My spiritual father, every time he taught the Bible and I was there, I heard him make this remark. God's word is God speaking to you. Now you understand this, God's speaking to different people in that book. There are times he's speaking to people that don't know him and they're lost. There are times he's speaking in that book to people that are Christ followers. There are times he's speaking to the Jews. So I have to know that when I'm reading my Bible. But there are promises, the Bible says, all of God's promises are yes and amen to us in Christ. So I can read from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation, every promise in there, they say there's over 7,000. They are yes and amen to you and I. So the promises of God are yes to us, which means anything God promised you in that book from old to new, you can have faith and believe God that you can have it in your life. Are you with me? So God's word is where wisdom comes from. Listen to what Proverbs 35 and six says. Every word of God is tested and refined. Like silver, he is a shield to those who trust and take refuge in him. Now watch, verse six. Do not add to his words or he will reprove you and you will be found a liar. We could say it this way. Don't add to God's words. Don't take away from God's words. Uh, you, you might know this person. There's a pastor. He's gone home to be with the Lord. His name was John Osteen. His son is Joel. Joel and I happen to be friends. We became friends over the years, and I think it's amazing that you can have a friend like that. I remember I was back behind stage on a, a weekend where we were doing our Christmas production, and a text comes up on my phone, and it's Joel. He's like, hey, man, I'm praying for you. And I'm like, dear Lord, Joel Osteen is praying for me. That is amazing. But Joel's dad, John, was a pastor to pastors. And John Osteen said, one day I was teaching out of the Corinthians, and I got to the part where it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And he said, I'm a Baptist background at the time. I'd not been filled with the Holy Spirit. So I tried to explain the gifts of the Spirit to my Baptist congregation. He said, I finally closed the book and said, you know what? I don't have any idea what I'm talking about. And just walked off the stage. That's amazing. Later, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. And John Osteen became one of the greatest pastors ever and still to this day has affected my life in a, in, a, in a strong way, so I think that's amazing. So we can't add to it, we can't take away, and then don't try to explain it in a way that's wrong. Keep the Bible in context of the thing that it's talking about and you'll always be safe. Watch this, Proverbs 9, there's a little story that I wanna show you. We're talking about how do you and I get wisdom. So we'll, we'll, we'll go through this and I think when you walk out of this building, you'll know how to gain it. Proverbs 9, one through six, or wherever you're joining us from. Proverbs 9, 1 through 6, wisdom has built her house. So this is wisdom. We know wisdom is called a woman all the way through the book of Proverbs. A lady. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. So we know this up to this point. The number seven is God's number for completion. Most of us know that. Seven of these places that is talking about these pillars, the seven pillars suggest a pretty big structure. And they're about to have a party. They're about to have a celebration. Watch verse three. She has sent out wisdom, her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Who's she calling for? Verse four, let all who are simple, if you look it up in the Hebrew, those that are young, those that are inexperienced, those that are naive. Come on, I'm gonna ask you a question. How many know somebody that they're just naive? Anyone know anyone like that? Yeah, they're just naive. You're like, whoa. Wisdom is calling the simple, the young, the inexperienced, the naive to come to, their, to her house. To those who have no sense, she says, come eat my food and drink the wine I've mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. What I wanna call this this weekend is an all call. That's what that scripture is. Everybody is welcome. Whether you are inexperienced, whether you are naive, whether you are young, you're simple, you are all invited, plus anyone else, it is not just for the elite to get wisdom. Amen. It's for everybody. Amen. So wisdom, the same man, everybody. But here's what's crazy. In going through the book of Proverbs, there's another all call. And I think it's interesting that wisdom saying, hey, everybody should come. Everyone should go after wisdom. But check this out. Chapter nine, verse 13 through 18, 
folly. Everyone say folly. So this is a different, the opposite of wisdom. It's the unruly woman and is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, food eaten in secret is delicious, but little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. So I want you to get this, guys, two calls. This one, the house is not beautiful from what I can tell, and it looks like the water and the food are stolen, so that's not good, and the whole thing just seems less appealing. Wisdom's calling, and wisdom's like, hey, I want everyone, but here's what I want you to jot down if you're taking notes. Wisdom and folly, both of them, are calling every day. The question is, whose invitation are you gonna take? See, if you're a Christ follower, you have a choice. You can still follow folly. If you're a Christ follower, you have a choice. You could say, I'm gonna choose wisdom today. You could not choose it tomorrow. You have to make a choice on a daily basis. What am I going to choose? Wisdom and folly. Every single day, they're calling. And the question is, who are you? Which invitation do I choose? So both of these parties have the same invite list, if you want. They're both inviting the same people. And then here's what's crazy. So that's wisdom, that's folly. If you flip over into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus literally in Luke's gospel chapter 14, he has a calling like this. And he says, I want, he, he actually sends people out in a story that he's telling. I want them to go out into the highways, the byways. I want them to invite everybody in to a supper, a feast that I'm gonna have. Jesus is telling the story. And you know what they start doing? They start making excuses why they can't come. Jesus said, hey, I got this feast, it's amazing. Everybody should come. And all of a sudden, they have an excuse. Listen to a couple of excuses. One guy said this, I've just bought a piece of land and I have to go look at it. Now, can everyone be honest with me right now? I don't wanna use the word dumb or stupid, but would it not be the stupidest thing on the planet if I go buy a piece of land but I never looked at it? And then when Jesus is calling that I tell him this, I'm sorry, I bought a piece of land. You know how it goes when you don't have wisdom, Jesus. I bought it without ever looking at it. And then the other guy comes to Jesus and says, man, I wanna come, you know, but I just married a woman. Well, that changes everything. Because that's what happens with many people when they get married. It changes their whole life and sometimes not in a good way. He's like, I married a woman, I can't come. In other words, they have excuses. And if you're taking notes, I want you to jot something down that I think is so important. When we are unsatisfied, we tend to shift blame. Let me, let me ask you a question. How many here have ever shifted blame to someone else? Wait, let me ask it a different way. How many of you know someone who shifts blame? <laughs> That's awesome, yeah, all of us do. But what if God and wisdom have called us and we are the ones who decline to answer that call? What if God and wisdom have called us? Come on, here's an invitation for wisdom. That's what we're talking about this weekend. We're gonna show you in a moment how you can tap into wisdom. But what if wisdom and God have called out and said, hey, and you declined it? I wanna ask you that question. Let me ask you this. Is there ever a time in your life where you knew, man, I wish I would've just had wisdom when I made that decision? You know someone else? Because everyone raises their hand when it's someone else. You're like, yes, I know. I know. Let me tell you a story about Pastor Barb and I. We were younger, our building was up on the top of the hill back when it was a smaller church. We are younger, my dad was younger. My dad worked at Packard Electric, I told you about that. And there, he worked midnights, and um, there was this thing going on where if you invested a certain amount of money, this guy would turn it around, and the next thing you know, a week later, you had two, three, four, or five times the amount of money. The guy was from Worcester, Ohio, he's in jail now, <laughs> that did this. But my dad, we're sitting around a table with all our family, my brothers, my sister-in-laws, we're all talking. My dad's like, guys, I took some of my retirement money and put it in. Here's my checks I got back. He's showing us checks for 15,000, 20,000, 30,000. I'm like, dude, I gotta find some money <laughs> and put it in here. And so all of, all of the brothers are sitting there and 
they're all saying, man, we did it. And I'm like, I'm feeling like I gotta do this. I never did this. God, what would you want? I never did this. Father, I need wisdom. Should I do this? Shouldn't I do it? So I did it. We went and got money we didn't have, which means you took a loan or you got it off a credit card and put it into it. Sooner or later, the whole thing collapsed. It was a scheme. And we lost all of our money. My dad got some of his money back because he had been one of the first investors and those guys got their money back. I'm glad he did. I did not tap into, I'm trying to tell on myself for all of you to look at me like, are you that stupid? Yes. <laughs> that was called naive. That was called inexperience. That was called not having wisdom. What I'm trying to help you with is don't do things. Young people, if you're here and you're like, man, I'm gonna marry so-and-so, you know there's a God you can ask, Amen. right? You can just say, hey, should I be married to so-and-so? You know, they, 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 they mistreat me, they, they do things wrong, should I, should I marry him? What if the Lord says no? Let me say this to you right now. If today is where God is saying no, there's something better tomorrow. A no today means a better tomorrow in those kind of situations. All right, so that's my story and it's, it's not really great. But thank God he is so faithful to pull you out even when you make mess ups like that. And God did. Proverbs 2, 6. For the Lord gives skillful and godly wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understand. But here's the problem with wisdom. Sometimes it can come packaged in a little bit harder or harsh way. Watch. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Now, I didn't say that. But I bet if I asked if all you knew someone like this, you'd be like, yes, I do. I do know someone this stupid. But um, here's what I want you to, I want you to jot this down. We could say this. The one who seeks wisdom is open to advice and correction. The one who seeks wisdom is open to advice and correction. So you all know the people in our lives, throughout our lives, that they know everything. There's not a thing they don't know. I'm always amazed by that. I'm like, I try to ask them questions that I think there's no way they know the answer to this one. And they know everything. It's amazing. Let me just, if you're jotting down notes, if you're writing anything down, just jot this down. Wisdom, when you seek wisdom, you're open to advice. You're open to correction. So we talked about, listen, we're gonna close this up. We talked about wisdom calling. We talked about folly calling. We talked about Jesus calling. So how do we what if there was a call for you and you declined it? So I wanna to talk to you in closing. How do you get wisdom? Because I believe every person hearing my voice, wherever you're joining us from, you need wisdom. How do you and I get wisdom? Here's my question to you. What if you hung up, you declined the call in other words? What if you declined the call? I want you to jot this down, call back. What if you declined the call? Call back. What if you declined wisdom's call in your life? Call on wisdom. Are y'all with me? You say, how do I do that, Pastor? James chapter one, verse five. Y'all with me? If any of you is lacking or deficient in wisdom, let him ask, let him call God, who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Here's what I have found out in my life personally. There are times I don't wanna hear what God has to say because it might be opposite of what I want. Whew. I know none of you are like this. You're, you're, you're learning about how unspiritual your pastor is. <laughs> but there are times I know if I ask God, he's gonna tell me opposite of what I want. And that's why some of you young people, some of you older people, you don't listen. I don't want someone telling me not to marry that person. I don't want someone telling me not to buy that home. I don't want someone to tell me not to move out of town. I don't want that, so I'm not gonna ask anyone. I'm not even gonna ask God. But let me tell you this. If God's wisdom is what we think it is, he'll lead you down a path that you will never regret, and he'll lead you down a path that will be blessings every single time. Amen? So, if you missed wisdom's call, what are you gonna do? Call back. So I'm gonna show you one last story and we'll close this up and I'm gonna take a moment where we, we have some time to just go ahead 
and, and ask God for wisdom. So we'll do that in a moment. But in 1 Kings chapter three, for you that don't know the story, Solomon is the king. He's the guy that wrote Pro Proverbs that we're talking about. And Solomon, when he becomes the king, he goes to God and just, he, he's like, God, I don't know how to lead these people. And one night, he's at a certain town. He went to make some sacrifices and offerings to God. He's in a certain town, and he's sleeping. And the Lord comes to him and says, what do you want? Ask anything you want, and I'll give it to you. Now, I know some of you are thinking, man, I, if that would happen to me, I would ask, and this is why it won't ever happen probably to any of us, because watch what Solomon does. Solomon says, Lord, what I'd like to have from you is wisdom. Amen. And you know what the Lord says to him? Because you didn't ask for money, because you didn't ask for long life. He said, I'm gonna make you the smartest man ever that lived on the planet from up to this point and forever. I'm gonna give you wisdom and I'm gonna give you long life because you didn't ask for those things. What did he ask for? An understanding heart or wisdom or to be wise. Watch, 1 Kings 3, 9. Therefore, give your servant an understanding heart or wisdom to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this great people of yours. Now you can imagine, Solomon's a young guy. David is his dad, he's been the leader. He's been amazing. For all of you that don't know, David wrote the book of Psalms. So all those Psalms we uh, read or sing songs out of them, David wrote those. He was amazing. He's got this son named Solomon. You're coming up under your dad's wing. You wanna be able to do what your dad's been doing. And you're like, I can't do this. And what's he do? He goes to God. Because if you're a parent right now and you're struggling, if you're a single mom and you're struggling, if you're here and you're saying, man, we're going through some stuff right now, there is a God that you can tap into and tap into his wisdom and grab it into your life every day, every time you need it. So, one last scripture, 1 Corinthians 1.30, because we said this last week and I, did, I just said it, but I wanna read it. Jesus has been made wisdom unto us. 1 Corinthians 1.30, but it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus who became God-given wisdom for us. Other translation says, Christ has been made wisdom unto us. Our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Guys, when you accept a Christ, you, you know this, that you have God living on the inside of you. But there are times I need to tap into it. Even though I have God, I don't know all the right things. I don't know all the right decisions to make. I don't know everything. So there are times I have to tap into God. I have to tap into who lives in me. So one thing that we can all do, because wisdom is in Christ and Christ lives in us, we can tap into the wisdom of God. Parents, I feel for you right now. My kids are older, so I got grandkids that I'm watching now and I'm watching the stuff coming at them. So if you're a young parent right now, seriously, my heart goes out to you. I feel for you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment today, when we're in, just in a moment, and say, I need your wisdom, God. I need your wisdom to raise these kids. I need your wisdom. Now, it's always great to go to people that have already been through the journey that you're on, right? And you can tap into them. They know they had kids this age. It wasn't that long ago for them. And, and you can tap into some stuff from them. But nothing beats being able to go to God and say, God, I need some wisdom. I am not knowing what to do right now as a parent. I feel, I feel like as a parent that I, I miss it every single day. God, can you help me? You know God's like waiting for you to answer the call. He's waiting for you to just say, I want wisdom. Wisdom will help you make every decision. If I would have asked for wisdom that day at that table, instead of telling my dad, I'm in, man. We're in. If I would have just said, God, I need some wisdom. And God would have definitely said this, don't do it. But I did it anyway. And we've all done that. Here's what I want you to hear. Thank God for grace. Thank God for mercy. Because if we deserved what we really could get in this life, we'd be in some trouble. But mercy is we don't get what we deserve because Jesus got it put on him. So we get what? We get grace. That doesn't give us any reason to go out and live crazily and, and 
do wrong things. Grace empowers me to live like Jesus. Grace empowers you to live like he lives. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna go back to James chapter one. And we're gonna ask God by reading the scripture and then take a moment where we just spend a moment quietly and say, God, give me wisdom. See, I know people that have been super educated, three, four degrees, they're, they're amazingly educated naturally. But you know what they still do? They still go to God and ask him for wisdom. You mean you could be that educated? Yeah, I know, I know some people I'm thinking of right now that go to our church. They have two master's degrees. They have a doctorate in this and doctorate. In, they're, they're like super duper educated. And you know what they do when they need help? They go and ask God for wisdom. So can you be that educated and still need God's wisdom? This isn't education, guys. It's wisdom from heaven. So I want you to stand. Can you stand? And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have them pop this up on the screen all across all of our campuses. They'll see this. But I, I, wanna, I wanna go ahead and read it out loud. I want, you, I want you to read with me. So when I say one, two, three, when I hit three, let's read. Ready? One, two, three. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. Let's do it one more time because I don't think once is enough. So let's at least do it twice. Ready? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. And just so you realize that three times is just much better. <laughs> Ready? Ready? One, two, three. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. Now remember that song we sang earlier, the good, he's our good shepherd. The good shepherd gave you wisdom, but you have to tap into it. So right now, as a mom, as a dad, as a parent, as a single mom, single dad, whoever you might be, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, whoever, we're gonna ask God. We're gonna take a moment quietly and we're gonna just spend a moment in this time and say, Lord, I need your wisdom. I need your wisdom for whatever situation you're going through. Maybe you're about to go into business or sell a business or do something. God, I need your wisdom. I told you the story about us making a mistake. Can I tell you how many times I did ask God for his wisdom and there was no mistake. He is really faithful. He is a good shepherd. So let's close our eyes. Father, I pray for every individual in this response time right here, right now, that as they think about what they just heard and as they ask you for wisdom for an area in their life, I pray as we take this quiet time with you, that you, Father, will give wisdom to each person that is asking. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, you have to ask with your own heart and your own mouth. So as we're quietly listen to this music playing in a moment we're going to sing this song shepherd but before we do any of that can you take a moment now just say god i need your wisdom god help me i need your wisdom i'm asking for it. just go ahead and do that right now Maybe you're here and say, Pastor, I don't have wisdom. I don't have Jesus in my life, and I'd like to have him. The reason why Jesus came was to come into a relationship with you, 
come into relationship with me. That's why he came. He came so that he could have a relationship with you. We know that he came for our sins to be forgiven. We know that the Bible says all of the sin of mankind was put on him. I'm so thankful for that. But he came so that he could reach out and extend an invitation to all of us. Would you like to have this journey with him and walk with him? So if you're here and you say, Pastor, I've never done that. I've never received Christ. Or Pastor, I need to recommit. Man, I've gotten so far off track and I need to recommit my life. I would love to pray with you in a moment, but here's what I wanna say before we pray this prayer. True salvation comes through repentance. The scripture's so clear on that. And repentance simply means to change, to turn direction, change direction. So you've been living maybe one way and you have to change that direction to go in another way, which means I've been serving over on this side against God, not for God, and I'm gonna go on this side for God and with God and accept Christ as Savior. Jesus must become not just your Savior, but he has to become our Lord, which means he is the Lord over everything. He controls everything. If you're here and you say, all right, Pastor, I I need that prayer. I need Jesus Christ into my life. His eyes are closed. Let's pray together. I'm gonna ask you to repeat it after me. Just say these words from your heart out loud, nice and loud. Oh God, I repent of my sins. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart. Be my savior, be my Lord. From this day forward, I thank you that I am saved, I have Christ in me, and I will now live for you for the rest of my days. I thank you for salvation, in Jesus' name, amen. Now eyes are closed, just for a moment. If you're here and say, Pastor, I just prayed that. I just received Christ, or I just, I'm asking him to help me get back on the right path, to get back in fellowship with him. If you prayed that prayer here online or you did it at Fairlawn or you did it at Stowe, I want you right now to take a moment and say, okay, I'm gonna take a step of faith. And that simply means this, I prayed that prayer and I'm willing to admit it. I'm willing to say yes to Jesus and I did pray that prayer. No one's looking at you right now, I am. I wanna see your hands. I want you to put it up real high. If you just prayed that prayer and said, I received Christ into my life, put your hand up so I can see it all over the room. Hands are going up all over this place. If you're bold enough, put it up there so I can see it. And what you're saying is, I did it. I acknowledged Jesus as my savior. And so here's what I wanna say to every person, every person who just raised, yes, every person who just raised their hand, congratulations. This is the start of a new life for you. And we don't want you to live that life on your own and by yourself. So in a moment, our host is gonna tell you more about how we can make a connection with you. But please, 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 don't walk out of church not letting someone know, I just prayed that prayer and received Christ. As you're taking your seats, can we give it up one more time for all of those that just prayed that prayer?